Nazi Germany, probably one of the most polarizing times in human history. A time period where racial eugenics and racial purity was at the forefront of a very powerful empire. As most of you know about the Nazi regime, they captured innocent Jews and put them into concentration camps in order to experiment on them and to figure out why they were not members of the master Aryan race. One of the biggest leaders in this human experimentation, Josef Mengele. This man conducted several experiments on helpless young Jewish children, women, the elderly, often not taking into account their personal safety or security, resulting in the deaths of thousands. Really the number isn't known of how many people actually died underneath his experiments. Today I'm going to take you into the life of one of the most feared and most hated men of the Nazi regime, Josef Mengele. Josef Mengele was born March 16, 1911 in Gunzburg, Germany. He had two younger brothers and his father owned the Carr Mengele and Sons Company. This is basically a company that made farming equipment, which later turned into an ammunitions factory once the war started. Uh, in 1930, he graduated from high school and in 1931, he joined the Steel Helmets. This was a paramilitary organization who was responsible for security during Adolf Hitler's rise for power. Uh, he continued with the studies until 1935 when he received a PhD in anthropology from the University of Munich, Institute of Hereditary Biology and Racial Hygiene. He joined that organization in Frankfurt and was also underneath the tutelage of one guy, again, his name is long, this is Otmar Freeherr von Wuscher. Von Verscher. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing my German is not like that. He was a German geneticist and he had a particularly fond interest in twins. Foreshadowing. Underneath Von Verscher, Mengele studied the genetic factors that led to cleft lip and cleft palate in, in babies. Uh, he actually wrote a thesis on this subject that led him to get a doctorate from the University of Frankfurt in 1938. Mengele served in the Nazi party from 1938 to 1935, earning several medals in his army tenure. He also married Irene Schoenbein in 1939 and Rolf, their only son, was born in 1944. Before we get into all of the horrible things that Mengele did, I kind of have to go into what Nazism was as an ideology. So Nazism, it included ideas of anti-Semitism, eugenics, racial purity, along with German expansionism and also pan-Germanism. So in order to expand the Nazi empire, they went into countries such as Poland and the Soviet Union to extract Jews and take them into concentration camps because they were seen as inferior to the Aryan race. In 1942, Auschwitz had been converted from a house for slave laborers into a concentration slash extermination camp. These prisoners were transported to the camp via trains on daily convoys. By July of 1942, these doctors were responsible for segregating Jews into certain categories. These were those who were unfit to work and those who were fit to work. If you were fit to work, you were sent to concentration camps. If you were unfit to work, you were basically sent to the gas chambers. and Three quarters of all of the Jews that arrived at the concentration camps were deemed unfit. This included most children, women who were pregnant, women who had very small children, the elderly, and anybody else who was deemed unhealthy by whatever standards that the Germans were setting back then. This process of segregating Jews into certain categories was called selections. And by 1943, Mengele had actually been in charge of these selections. So as part of his duties, he would go to the hospital barracks where the sick Jews were at. And if they had not recovered in a certain amount of time, he would send them to the gas chambers. And sometimes he would carry out selections unprovoked and a means to get subjects for his future experiments on humans. Josef was seen as very different from most of the SS doctors who were responsible for these selections during this time because most of the doctors recall that this was the worst experience of their entire job. Like this is something that they didn't want to do. 
But Hosef was different. He would often be exuberant. He would smile and whistle and be extremely happy sending these good Jews to the gas chambers. He was also one of the doctors responsible for Zyklon B. This is the pesticide that was used in the gas that was exterminating most of the Jews in the chambers. He also developed a way to deal with disease outbreak at these camps. So let's say, for example, let's say there was a camp full of women who had typhus. He would send all of the women who were infected with typhus to the gas chambers. Then he would clean the gas chambers, disinfect them, and then put a whole entire new block inside the block that was already cleaned from all the, the dead bodies. And for this, he actually was given a medal and he was promoted to first position of his camp. All right, so this is probably the most just heinous part of the video. This is where I'm going to get into the human experimentation part. So if you are kind of squeamish or if you're kind of like you have sensitive ears or you have children around eyes, I highly implore you to, to make sure nobody is listening to this if they're not supposed to be. Josef saw Auschwitz as kind of like a farm for guinea pigs for his experiments. Most of his experiments consisted of, you know, twins, kids who had, I think it's called heterochromatic chromania, where they had two different eye colors. Dwarfs, people with disabilities were among most of the subjects that he used for his tests. Most of Mengele's test subjects were actually kept in better conditions than the other prisoners. They were often fed and kept in better housing. And even with the young patients, Josef would even offer them sweets and would introduce himself as Uncle Fritz at times. All while being the main reason why most of these children were sent to the gas chamber or subjected to terrible physical human experimentation that led to the deaths of many people. Although Josef tried to come up with a reason of why he was doing this, no one could find any legitimate reason why he was carrying out these experiments other than just pure sadism and just pure hate. I have an excerpt from a former doctor at Auschwitz. He says, he was capable of being so kind to the children, to have them become so fond of him, to bring them sugar, to think of small details in their daily lives and to do things we would genuinely admire. And then next to that, the crematoria smokes. And those children, tomorrow or in a half hour, he's gonna send them there. That is where the anomaly lays. You remember earlier how I said about Von Bercher and his weird obsession with twins? Well, it seems that Josef carried the same obsession too because every time he got twins, he would test their physical measurements. He would do a bunch of examinations on them. Some of these experiments would include unnecessary amputation of limbs, intentional infection of disease, uh, transfusions from one twin to the other, uh, several of these children died in the process. One of his assistants even recalled an occasion where he purposefully killed 14 twins by injecting their hearts with chloroform. Then if one child died of a disease, he would intentionally kill the other one for a comparative post-mortem report. So, as you see, this is where we have the senseless killings for scientific data. He even had experiments where he would try to inject chemicals into the eyeballs of innocent victims to, to, in order to change their eyes to the desired blue of the Aryan race. Even those who were born with two separate eye colors, those who are called heterochromatic, he killed those people as well so their eyeballs could be sent to Berlin for further study and then their skeletons be disposed of a few weeks later. One survivor even recalls an occasion of him removing the hearts and stomachs of victims with no anesthesia. Another one also recalled a, an occasion where he tried to sew twins back together, trying to create some weird attempt at a conjoined twins. And these children later died a few weeks later from gangrene. By 1945, the German Empire was on its last legs. And with that, Josef went on the run. Not too long after, he was actually captured by Americans, but for some reason he was not on the major war criminals list and he didn't have the identifiable SS tattoo that most of the doctors got during the camps. So he was eventually released under the fake name Fritz Holman. In 1949, with the assistance of a few members of the SS party, he did obtain a passport to sail to Argentina. However, his wife did not really agree with that and they divorced a couple years later. 
So Mengele found work in Buenos Aires, Argentina as a carpenter. There were also some reports published by the Argentinian government decades later that said that he may have been practicing medicine in Buenos Aires without a license and might have been responsible for the death of a teenage girl while he was performing an abortion. In 1956, he became so confident that he was free that he began living under his government name. But in 1958, after being questioned about the death of a girl during an abortion, he fled to Paraguay. However, there was a group of Nazi hunters. Most of these people were Austrian Holocaust survivors or the family of Holocaust survivors who were just hell-bent on hunting these Nazis down. So a man by the name of Hernan Longbean I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. He was able to find a divorce record of Josef and it linked an address to Buenos Aires, Argentina. But by the time they found out that he used to live in Argentina, Josef was already in Paraguay. 1959, the West German government finally issued an arrest warrant for Josef Mengele. And then with all the added publicity that this man is still on the loose, he had to leave Paraguay in 1960 and go to Brazil and move with the man by the name of Wolfgang Gerthar. He lived with Wolfgang until he stayed with a Hungarian couple, Gitz and Gitter Stammer in 1962. All while this was happening, an Israeli intelligence agency by the name of Mossad had been trying to comb together evidence based on what where his last reported locations were. They couldn't find anything on him. So by 1962, they had already called the manhunt off. Even in his later life in the 1970s, Josef still had no remorse for what he did and felt as if he did nothing wrong. In 1977, his son had visited him in his home and he said, what I'm reading, it says, an unrepentant Nazi who claimed he had never personally harmed anyone, but only carried out his duties as an officer, or as we like to call, the Nuremberg defense. I was only following orders. By the late 1970s, his health was very steadily declining. In 1976, he did suffer a stroke that also left him with an ear infection that caused him to have really weird balance issues. And then on February 7th, 1979, while he was out swimming with friends, he suffered a stroke in the water and he drowned. However, his body was burned under the name Wolfgang Gerhardt, and this was an identity that he was using since 1971. Josef Mengele, the man responsible for a numerous amount of deaths with his really unnecessary experiments on human nature. The fact that he was able to avoid capture was extraordinary even though what he did is still just unbelievable. But anyway, I really appreciate y'all for watching this, you know. I put a I put a decent amount of editing into this because like I had a lot of mistakes. I got to, had to edit out a whole bunch of times. I was flubbing up words and I was forgot what, what I had written down from my script, you know what I mean? But I thank you so much. I hope y'all enjoyed that. Please leave a like if you enjoyed that. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Please don't forget to turn on my post notice. Um, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate y'all so much. Uh, I'm out. Peace.